Welcome to Van of Action, the van build series. If you're designing a van, planning a van, dreaming of a van, I'm going to share with you something you don't want to do. It's just a nightmare. I did it. I thought I had it all figured out and I was wrong. I was wrong. No one likes what I did. So now I got to fix it and it's going to be a pig. Come on with me. Okay, so I got all worked up about what I was going to have to do and I started doing it and I got all excited and I deleted most of the video I did at the start. So let me explain to you what this big mistake was that I made. When we designed our van, we'd never had one before, but we really liked the idea of being able to share it. So we wanted to design a van that had a set of seats in the back, like a set of second seats. We wanted them to create a bit of a lounge area in case we had company when we were camping, but also we wanted to be able to maybe go on day trips with people, go to the zoo or go to a beach, you know, have our bikes in the back and just have a nice thing to do for day trips. Also, maybe just pick up somebody, take them out for dinner when we're trying, when we're in that particular city, not always be relying on someone else to do the driving. And then there will be times, and in fact, we're coming up to one this spring, we're going to drive from Santa Fe, New Mexico to Ontario, Canada. It'll be an eight day drive. We're doing it with another couple. We're not going to be sleeping in the van but we will be traveling in the van and having access to the cooler and the comfort and all the rest of it it just seems like a much better thing to be able to do than jam into a car for a road trip so we wanted to have a set of second seats now this was the start of covid and it was really hard to find anything at all it's hard to get people to even answer their telephones but nothing was coming out of china at that time so it was hard to find stuff and i was able to locate two second seats that were salvaged out of a ford transit shuttle bus or or something and uh, they had integrated seat belts and to me that was really important i wanted something that i could bolt down to the floor really well but then was all self-contained i didn't want to start getting into trying to build shoulder belts into the side of the van on my own i just didn't feel comfortable being able to do that so they reclined just a little bit about four inches and uh, they were available they were about four hours away i made the deal went over and got them brought them back so then as I'm designing the van, I spent hours and hours and hours trying to figure out where should these seats go and how should they be mounted in the van to be as functional and to be as optimally used as possible. And so I spent hours, I put them in the back of the van. We wanted them against the wall behind the driver's side because our kitchen was going to come across partway in front of the door. So there wasn't enough room to mount them facing forward and still get around the edge of them to get into the back of the van. So they're going to be turned towards the back or towards the wall behind the driver's side. I spent hours, hours in there. We had a window in the side wall, like in the, in the sliding door. And I thought, I looked at it and I, and I thought, you know what, if, if I angle these seats just a little bit towards the front, when you're driving in the back, you'll still be able to look out the front window between the two seats, between the driver's seat and the passenger seat, look out the front window and be able to see a little bit about where you're going, as opposed to constantly just looking this way and seeing things go by. That's what I thought. That's how I did it. And it wasn't an easy thing to do because underneath that part of the van, there's a lot of stuff. There's a, the muffler and a lot of heat shields. There's a lot of stuff in there. But I got them in. Now, I'm always driving. No one else really wants to drive the van, so I'm always doing the driving. But no one who sat in the back liked it. Everybody complained about it because they weren't actually side by side. You felt like you weren't... If you weren't really sitting beside anyone and the person in the very back seat was looking at someone else's shoulder and it just, it wasn't a good deal at all. No one liked it. No one liked it at all. And so this spring, which is the spring of 2023, uh, my wife said to me, Dave, we're going to go on this eight day road trip with another couple. And I'd really like it if you could do something with those back seats because it's not fun sitting back there. The least, at the very least, we have to swing them 90 degrees so they're side by side. If you could do that, that'd be much better. And I thought, well, okay, there's no point in having it if people aren't going to like it. But that's going to be a terrible job. That's like getting under there and trying to switch that around now is going to be just a terrible, terrible job. And so I said to her, well, absolutely, I can do that, and I will do that. But maybe while I'm doing it, maybe it's possible to find some better seats that work better for us now than what was available when we did the van in the first place. So let's take a look at that. This is the seat we're going to install behind the driver's seat against the wall, right up against the wall. It'll replace the two single seats I had in that were canted on a 45 degree angle. The lovely seat probably would have bought this initially had it been available during COVID. This is not a paid commercial. We paid full price for this seat 
and uh, we bought it from Wilderness Vans in Lethbridge, Alberta. Great company, great company to work with. Now, for what it's worth, they sell the seat and they sell the base individually. The base is on the website is $650. They said to me, Dave, we'll send you the shop drawings. You can have the base made locally and save the shipping cost, which I thought was pretty kind to them. Turns out I've got, I got the base made at a local machine shop and nobody I know, no bargains, 250 bucks. So the $400 savings there for what it's worth. What I love about this seat is it does a, a number of different functions. Now for us, all we thought we would get out of it was a, a nice place to sit. But this one, if you lift up on this bar, the seat comes in and out like it would a regular vehicle seat. And the back reclines a little bit. So, if someone's in the seat, we can pull it out and recline it a bit and be more comfortable. If, no, if someone isn't in the seat, we can pull the back up and push it back against the wall to give us more space in the cabin. That's fantastic. This seat also turns into a bed, which I didn't expect to be able to use, but let me show you. It, all, it normally has two headrests, which I've taken off to show this function. The back of it opens up just a little bit and the front flips over and then the back separates and it flips down. Look at that. Now that's not a full length bed. This is made uh, as intended to line up with another seat here to give you the extra length. I think we we might be able to make this work. The magic of it is, this might work in my van, which will just be a hoot. If it does, we'll get a single bed out of it. So in case one of our kids comes with us, it'll be a place to sleep. But it's really, really well made. To put it back, you lift the lever. You lift the lever. And then the back slides in. really pleased with this. I can't wait to show, show it to you in the van. Now here's something I didn't do a video about when I was doing the build, and that's my floor, how I built the floor. And you'll see that it's a one by one aluminum tubing with half inch plywood on top. And because I'm changing the seats, you can see it here. It's one by one aluminum tubing. And that tubing is just glued down with a construction adhesive. Take your grinder or something and rough up the surface of the tubing and take your grinder or something and take the paint off so you get bare metal. And then bare metal to bare metal, you can get a good strong adhesive joint between those. And then, and I'll do this before I'm finished, I put wool in between. Now, I'm using half inch plywood and half inch plywood is absolutely strong enough if the distance between your supports is about 12 inches or less. Plywood is the same density, whether it's a half an inch or an inch thick. It's the, the, the strength comes from the thickness and the thickness allows it to span a greater distance. So if you reduce the distance of the span, this is exaggerated here, but if you're 12 inches between supports, half inch plywood is fine. So you can save a little bit in your height and then between those supports, I put in the wool insulation. And I'm sure there's someone out there who's going to write a comment and say, well, Dave, you've created a thermo. You don't have a thermo break between the underside of your floor and your, your aluminum, and it's going to get cold. Well, anybody who thinks they're insulating the floor of their van to keep the van warm has to give their head a shake. Because one inch of anything, if it's 30 below, you're going to have cold feet. Believe me. I'm insulating, in my opinion, more for sound than I am for warmth. And I can tell you, driving down the road is a very quiet drive, van to drive. So one inch by one inch tubing, gave me a little practice with the cutter and doing all the rest before I started my roof rack. The adhesive works, and I'll tell you what, it's, it's been, this, been, this is the third year for this floor to be down, and when I, when I cut this floor out to, uh, to put in the new seats, that glue is really sticking well. Excellent. In every van build, there's going to be a whole lot of trying to match pieces of material to odd shapes. We've covered a bunch of different kinds of scribing. There'll be more of that to come. This one is self-inflicted. My old seats are where the black was. The new seat's going to be inside this square of new aluminum. 
And so I have I have this hole, this odd shaped hole to patch on each around the perimeter of the seat base. And initially I was going to take the whole floor up and do it again, but that seems like a real waste. And so I need the, I need these little bits of plywood, but I have to buy a whole sheet of plywood to do this. I don't have any scraps laying around. And I, I can't do that conveniently today. So I'm going to move forward and try and get the seat base in. And then I'll put these, pl these pieces of plywood around afterwards. That's going to be a difficult thing to do. So before I put the seat base in, I'm going to make a pattern of each piece of plywood I have to cut. And I'm going to do that with some brown paper that I bought at... Uh, Look at this, it's um, London Drugs, I think, but you can pick it up at a dollar store too. Like it's not, it's, I've always seen, I always have some laying around for packaging something or wrapping stuff up. So right now I'm just going to tape this over top of the hole. Anywhere, doesn't matter where. And I'm doing this in real time. I have not done it before. And I didn't do a dry run. So if it doesn't work, you're going to see that too. Like so. Okay. It's important to be laying flat. So that's down. Now that's good. So now you can feel the corner there, and I'm going to take, I'm just going to take and rub my pencil. See the very clear line. There's the pattern. You know, I have an idea. <clears throat> This paper is relatively heavy, and my knife is relatively sharp. I'm going to see if I can just slide along on the inside of that hole and make my pattern that way. Let's see if that'll work. Just by using the knife to slide along the hole. Well, that's working really well right there. The aluminum tubing is glued down now, it's had a chance to cure. So I made a cardboard template exactly the size of the base, and I marked the frame on it, so I know exactly where the steel is going to be. And then I took the time to really be careful where the holes were going to go, because there's stuff underneath here, and I want to make sure that I don't run into any trouble. So I've located where the four holes are going to be. And now I've marked those holes with a drill through the template onto the floor, and now I'll take that template and put it on the base. As long as you keep things oriented properly, lining these holes up is really simple. Make a small mark with a small drill first and then drill the bigger holes after that. I'm not going to show exactly how I anchored these seats down because I'm not an expert at this. I'm comfortable with what I did. I used half inch steel, they call it number eight bolts, which is what the automotive store tells me that people use for anchoring seats down. And on the underside, I used quarter inch flat stock as washers. I made an individual washers for each situation depending on how close to the frame they were or whatever. I'm very comfortable that these are anchored down really really well and if we're ever in an accident these seats are not going to pull up. But everyone has to choose how they want to do this so just be careful and do it as you wish. Here are the floor pieces patched in. Tracing that paper made it so simple. This would have been a very, very difficult piece of plywood to cut. But with a paper pattern, it was really easy. And using the paper pattern, I was able to nest them together. This is, before I cut them out, this is the, uh, this is a piece of waste. I mean, there's next to no waste at all. Worked out really, really well. I'm really happy with that. And I'm gonna cover this up with some other floor later in the season anyway. And here's the seat installed. Pretty swanky. Now I'm going to 
build something on this end and something on this end as well, a little table or, or and a cup holder or something. And I'm really pleased with that. It's just excellent. But now let me demonstrate it for you. And here we are. This is just amazing. Now, when we're driving, when we're on the road, we'll be able to, whoever's back here, be able to pull it out a little bit, be able to recline a little bit, be able to sit really comfortably. It's just wonderful. Be able to sit here, seat belts will be on. It'll just be great. For the other seats, we had bought these wicker boxes for storage, but also had cushions made to match the drapes so it's all color coordinated and be able to sit going down the road little table here with a cup in it you know a person beside you so this would just be ideal just perfect really happy with this it's worked out really well but check this out the headrests come off And we have a single bed. <laughs> this is a bonus. I'm feeling really good about this. We found adding the second seats was a game changer for us. Being able to share the van life experience with people who don't have access to it all the time just makes everybody smile. It's a lot of fun. Hope you found this useful. Give us a like, a share, a subscribe, and come on back and visit us again. There's some other videos here you might find interesting too. Cheers.